Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, DwyerVIP.com, free site. Let's talk about Gennady Golovkin's next moves. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Golovkin is the IBF champion, right at middleweight. His number one contender is Sergei Derianchenko, a fighter who is a power puncher, who's almost certain to bring the fight to Golovkin, right? A fighter who is on a string of stoppages, unbeaten with a greater than 80% KO ratio. Now understand the way boxing operates. I know Darianchenko only has 12 fights, but he's 32 years old. This is a guy who fought as an amateur, right? Fought in the Olympics. Now this is the professional part of his career. And with Canelo pulling out of the match, Darianchenko, whose nickname is The Technician, wants to take advantage of his mandatory challenger status and he wants to fight Golovkin. Now let me just say, understand the IBF is not the only entity enamored, we'll say, with Darianchenko. He's the number five ranked contender at middleweight by the WBC. He also is the fifth ranked contender of all middleweights as ranked by Ring Magazine, right? So he wants to be Golovkin's next opponent. Now, I don't believe Golovkin is afraid of anybody at middleweight. He's already fought Canelo. He's already fought Danny Jacobs. Golovkin right now, on very short notice, because his dance partner, Canelo, was unable to go through with the fight on May the 5th, Golovkin on very short notice, wants an opponent who's going to bring in box office. Right? Golovkin is prepared to fight at the StubHub Center in Southern California. He wants someone who can sell tickets in Southern California. And Golovkin's people aren't sure that the name Sergei Darianchenko on short notice however qualified he is as an opponent, is going to be able to sell tickets for the fight in Southern California. So Golovkin's preference is to fight Vanis Martirosian, who's from Southern California, a guy who got a draw with Arislandi Lara the first time he fought Lara and who went the distance with Laura the second time he fought Laura. A guy who fought a former champion, Ishii Smith, and who dropped Smith multiple times in the fight. A guy who fought the currently reigning 154 pound champion, Jamel Charlo, in a razor close fight, and who lost on two of the judges scorecards by two rounds. Right, Martirosian, entertaining style, throws a lot of punches, is a bit of a daredevil, would bring the fight to Golovkin, is not going to be running away from Golovkin. He would make the fight entertaining and he would pull in fans. The problem is that Darianchenko, the mandatory contender, hasn't been boxing for all of his life to become a mandatory contender. To hear that the champ is available for a fight, is looking for a partner, and isn't ready to pick him. Right now, Darianchenko is well connected. His promoter is Lou DiBella, right? One of the best in boxing. You might remember him from a Rocky movie. You might remember him as the promoter for one of the, well, the middleweight division's better recent champions, Sergio Martinez. Of course, the manager of Darianchenko, or we'll call him advisor. You know how these things are a little bit uh, amorphous for legal reasons. Is Al Heyman, 
right? So these guys are basically saying, look, our guy wants to be next. Understand, Debella and Haman are doing what they have to do here. You represent the mandatory, right? Before the champion overlooks the mandatory for whatever reason, box office, etc., you need to step in and you need to, number one, Make sure your fighter is fully compensated. If he's going to step aside, that step aside money has to be sufficient, doesn't it? Right? This is an opportunity to pay a lot of bills. You have a hungry fighter on the way up. Right? Give him some money to quench that thirst. You also want promises. You understand that Golovkin was about to fight Canelo. There's a big outcry for the rematch. Golovkin has other options, right? People want to see, at least I want to see, Danny Jacobs against Golovkin, too. Let me say this, too. One of the best possible opponents for Golovkin, in my opinion, right? Keeping in mind that Golovkin's had a problem with very aggressive fighters who are bold enough to get inside, right? Yes, I'm still talking about that Kasim Uma fight years later would be former 168-pound champion Caleb Truax, right? A lot's going on at 160 and 168. So, if you're representing Darianchenko, you understand Golovkin has options. He has big blockbuster fights left and right, right? So you want the promise that, hey, if my guy steps aside now, He's going to be the next fight, right? We don't want to wait for Canelo to figure out how to go through a training camp without eating tainted meat, right? We don't want to wait for, you know, Golovkin and Danny Jacobs to figure out if they're going to have a rematch and when. We don't want Golovkin to be thinking to himself, hey, wait a moment. If I beat Caleb Truax, who used to be a middleweight, and I might be in the hunt at 168, and my goodness, a lot's going on at 168, right? George Groves is fighting Callum Smith. Uh, James DeGale just got his title back. Um, you know, Zudo is unbeaten and has a belt. Gilberto Ramirez. You know, so, Darianchenko, justifiably, in my opinion, is saying, hey, I'm the mandatory. My status means something. You're looking for an opponent. You haven't announced your next opponent. Well, here I am. Take care of the mandatory. I'll take the fight on short notice. Right? I'll use my mandatory status and we'll fight you in a few weeks if you just give me the opportunity. Well, understand, at this stage of the game, the Golovkin folks were looking at big money fighting Canelo. They still want big money. They don't want people in L.A. reading about Golovkin fighting Darianchenko and then saying to themselves, who's Darianchenko? They want people in L.A. saying, that's right, we remember when Vanis Martirosian fought Lara the first time. We remember when Vanis Martirosian fought Jamel Charlo. We remember when Vanis Martirosian beat Ishi Smith. Right? This is the guy we want. We've watched him in Southern California for years. If you're going to tell us that he's in the ring for the middleweight championship against Golovkin, then sign us up. Right? So let me say this. <clears throat> I understand both sides of the argument. I'm okay if Golovkin fights either guy. But let me suggest a third guy who, in my opinion, would give Golovkin a tougher fight than both of the first two guys, then the mandatory, and then Vanis Martirosian. Let me point out, too, if you search around the net a little bit on YouTube, you're going to see a sparring session between Vanis Martirosian and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., bigger man, right? Vanis, of course you know, has come up as a super welter. Doesn't really have a lot of experience in middleweight. 
So I'm sure there's some critics who would say, hey, this guy's not even a middleweight. Well, online you'll see him sparring with former middleweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., right? Who, as you can imagine, is weighing a hell of a lot more than the middleweight limit during the sparring session. And let's just say Vanis is putting on a clinic in that video, right? Vanis' style might actually work better against bigger men because Vanis is fast, right? And Vanis throws combinations. Well, let me add another name. And this guy has openly said, sign me up. You want, you want an opponent for May the 5th. <laughs> right? Folks, it's almost the middle of April. You want an opponent for a few weeks from now. Consider me. And that's a tall guy who can emulate what Danny Jacobs did. Jacobs' best moments against Golovkin, the ones that got Golovkin confused were when Jacobs went southpaw and started moving behind a jab, right? When Jacobs starts flashing a right jab, it confused the daylights out of Golovkin. Golovkin had a problem with Jacobs' length, right? Jacobs is tall. He had a problem with Jacobs' southpaw stance, coupled with movement, right? It's not good enough against Golovkin to just be a southpaw if you're going to be lingering around the pocket, right? Golovkin hits too hard, and he's going to figure out how to hit you. But if you have power and a stiff jab from a southpaw stance, and you're moving where Golovkin has to reset, Golovkin has problems. I thought Golovkin had many more problems against Danny Jacobs than he did against Canelo the first time. Right? Well, that fighter is unbeaten. That fighter is a former super welterweight champion. I'm talking about Demetrius Andre. Now, I'll agree. I'll concede that I'm just being selfish here. I want to see the best fights possible. I want to see an obvious Boxing Hall of Famer, Golovkin. He's in the Hall of Fame right now in my eyes. He's one of the best middleweight champions in history in my eyes. I want to see him tested by a style that gave him problems. Right? Obviously, the dream opponent for me here, if Golovkin you know, had to pick the best possible opponent, would be Danny Jacobs. But Danny Jacobs isn't available. Jacobs has his own fight, right? Jacobs has his own life, his own career. So, give me Jacobs Light. Give me Demetrius Andre. That's the best possible fight. What I'm hoping for here in this video is for some network somewhere, right? Or some multi-millionaire who wants to jump into the boxing promotion business and is willing to work with guys who have contracts with the fighters, Tom Loeffler and people like that. I want some financial source to step in and say, you know what, that is a dream fight. Unbeaten Golovkin against unbeaten Andre with a slick southpaw stance. Right? That has given Golovkin problems in the past. Right? You need the big money coming in off the sidelines to make the fight happen because Andre doesn't have the name in Southern California that Vanis Martirosian has. In any event, let's just say the guys lining up to fight Golovkin are all credible. In other words, Darianchenko, the number one contender, he's very credible. Right? He's very credible. Unbeaten. Right? Vanis Martirosian, he's very credible. Now, he's a righty. And Martirosian trades more than Andre does. It'd be an exciting fight. But I don't think Martirosian has the same chances of beating Golovkin that Demetrius Andre would have. But just understand, those three guys, there's not a wrong choice in the mix. 
even though the fight would be made on short notice. Each of those guys is credible. And obviously, if the stars align, if Danny Jacobs were to say, hey, you know, Golovkin, I want you. <laughs> and if Danny Jacobs' his next opponent says, I'll step aside, that would be a dream fight as well. Right? Don't assume that Golovkin's next fight on short notice is going to be a walk in the park. The people lining up for the opportunity are serious contenders. I'll be blunt. I'm stunned that on shut on such short notice, right? You know, guys getting calls or guys doing callings with a fight date just a few weeks away, that this high a caliber of opponent has stepped out of the weeds for the shot against a champion who, quite frankly, hasn't lost for years and who, until the Danny Jacobs fight, had a KO streak, not just a successful defense streak going, but a KO streak going in title defenses. So keep an eye on the Golovkin situation. There's a good chance that Golovkin's next fight is going to be real against a very credible opponent, right? Either an unbeaten mandatory an unbeaten, slick, tall southpaw or a combination punching guy from Southern California who has already been in the ring with some of boxing's best, Laura Twice, Jamel Charlo, right? And who has never been stopped. Think about that. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you on short notice in the comment section to this video. Tell us who you feel, right? He should fight, right? Give us the rundown. Let us know, right? Of the guys I've named and even guys I haven't named, who you feel are in training for a fight or who have expressed a willingness to fight Golovkin on Cinco de Mayo, leave your suggestions in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.